In this video, I show you the exact anatomy you need to know when assessing MRI for Morton's neuroma. This is part 2 of my Morton's neuroma video, so if you haven't already seen part 1, make sure to check that one first. You can find the link either somewhere here or down in the description. T1 on the left hand side and a T2 on the right hand side. And then you identify the neurovascular bundle and you follow it all the way through and you're looking basically for a soft tissue mass or with this signal intensity here in these intermetatorsal spaces. Now this is a nice example that not all changes in the intermetatorsal space are actually Morton's neuroma but it can also be fluid as in this case. If you look closely here at this region and you correlate this with your T2 sequence, you can see that it's actually fluid here and the mass is basically below. So in this case we have a combination of Morton's neuroma with associated intermetatarsal bursitis and this is quite a common finding shown here. If you want to know whether gadolinium is necessary for Morton's neuroma diagnosis, I would argue no, it's not necessary. And the reason is and that's also supported by the literature that the enhancement is highly variable. So sometimes these neuromas they can um, enhance, sometimes they don't, so it does not really help you. Let me show you here in this case. We can see some enhancement in the intermetatarsal space actually, but now let me pull in the T2 sequence here and the T1 sequence. If you go to the point where there was enhancement and we correlate this with our other sequences, you can actually see that the enhancement is at the level of the bursa. So this, in addition to the increased amount of fluid, is consistent with intermetatarsal bursitis. And the Morton neuroma that we think we have below here is actually not enhancing that much. So it's not really necessary to do it. And it's fine if you only have your T1 and your T2. At the same time, I think gadolinium can be helpful if you're also looking for plantar plate tears, because sometimes these tears are better depicted with gadolinium, but I will make a separate video about the plantar plates in the future. This is a really nice example of the anatomy, and let's start proximally, identify the neurovascular bundles between the flexor tendons, and then you can also see the deep transverse metatarsal ligament that some spaces here, we can see it here. Now let's focus on the second and third intermetatarsal space. Let me make this a little bit bigger. If you scroll through you can see there is something in the third intermetatarsal space. It has the same intensity as muscle on your T1 sequence and if you look on your T2 sequence you can see Obviously we have fluid collection here in the intermetatarsal bursa, more than 3 millimeters, so it's consistent with intermetatarsal bursitis. But if we go more distally, we can see coming from the neurovascular bundle, this structure here, here, tack, this one. So this certainly is a mortal neuroma here. And if you look carefully on the next slide, you can see the division here of this nerve in the fourth and third toe. Let me go back here. We have these dots here, here. They are joining together here, forming this mass, this perineural fibrosis and nerve degeneration. Here we can see it here still. Now at this level it's going downwards. You can see it's going downwards. And then it's running below the deep transverse metatarsal ligament here. and. What we have here is not belonging to the neuroma, but it's an intermetatarsal bursitis because it's above the level of the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. Now, in this case, the Morton's neuroma is at this level and not down here. And the reason for this is that this was an examination in the supine position and not in a prone position. If you examine your patient in a plantar flexion with the patient on your belly, then this mass all this would be pressed downwards and popping out here. And in fact, I have shown you this in part one, that if you do the examination in prone position, Morton's neuroma tend to be bigger because they are looking out here, they have more space here and they appear bigger. 
Now this is a T1 after gadolinium administration and let's see what this Morton's neuroma is doing. So we can see there is extensive enhancement here in the intermetatarsal space, basically matching this fluid collection, therefore it's consistent with an intermetatarsal bursitis. And then if we look at this mass, the, the real Morton's neuroma here, we can still, there is a little bit of enhancement, but if you look closely, I can maybe try to show you this a little bit like this. Uh, it's a little bit enhancing, especially compared to the other tissue around it, but this stronger enhancement most likely belongs to the bursa here around it. So again, also here you can see the enhancement around it and here is the Morton neuroma. But then more distally we can see that there is quite some enhancement so it's a little bit a mixed signal intensity in this regard. So again, it's not really helping us that much. We already knew all this beforehand. We knew that there is bursitis, we knew that there is a Morton's neuroma. So it's not really necessary. That's it for today. If you have any questions for me or any comments regarding my content and so on, please comment below and I will come back to you. Also, give it a like if you learned something new today and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And if you did, there is a bell button, you can press that one too and you get automatically notified when I upload a new video, which is one or two videos every week. If you want to interact and support me on a more personal level, make sure to check out my Patreon page, you can find the link down in the description. Thanks for watching!